Welcome back to the Dan Maskell Tennis Centre at Loughborough University. We have one more match to go on finals day in week four. So far today, we've seen Emily Appleton squeeze past Elise Maloney in two very tight sets. So she's won three of the four weeks. Of course, Maloney won the other. Just moments ago, Luke Johnson was uh, beaten by Josh Paris. Uh, a really impressive display in patches, certainly, from Paris, who was the week one winner. And Dan Cox and Henry Patton are waiting in the wings for the men's final. Dan is 30 years of age. He has been in sensational form this week, winning all six matches without dropping a set to book his place in the final for the first time, having finished fourth in week one and third in week two before heading off to play in Egypt. He comes from Lancashire. He was a supremely talented junior, during which time he reached the final in Tarbes. He retired several years ago, but he's returned in style and his game continues to evolve. His opponent is Henry Patton, who is 24 years of age. He comes from Essex, a left-hander. He went to Culford in Suffolk and then embarked on a very successful US college career. He reached the week three final where he lost to Anton Matusevich and came into week four in ninth place, just one position away from a top eight slot, which ensures automatic qualification for finals week in December. He's an Ipswich fan. He's part of a very sporting family. Can he now go one better than in week three? Well, Jenny is here to answer that very question. What's your hunch, Jen? What's my hunch? That is a big question to start off with, Marcus, that's for sure. I thought the prediction came at the end. Well, I thought we'd get straight into oh, it, right, okay, to the okay. nub of the matter. Well, do you know, it's been an interesting week for both of them. Dan, on paper, has been playing fantastic tennis, as you mentioned. He hasn't dropped a set the whole week, and he also owns the head-to-head 2-0. -head two, two they played earlier on in the week as well. But um, Henry, earlier in the week, his wrist was really bothering him. It seems to have cleared up a bit, and certainly yesterday didn't bother him at all. Let's not forget this is the final match of the week, so both players are really going to put everything they have out on the court. Yeah, and I'm just wondering, I've mentioned, of course, that Henry got to the final in three, couldn't quite get the job done there, but will that experience help him or is he going to feel extra pressure because he doesn't twice want to go home with the runners-up spoon? Oh, of course, he, he will definitely want to get the win, but they're very different opponents, Anton Matusevic and Dan Cox, so I mean, Henry really is up against it in terms of a tough player that Dan Cox is, and I just feel that because this is Dan's first final and he's been in the semi-final twice, I don't know, I, I just have a feeling that Dan's got the bit between his teeth today. OK, well, let us hear what both men have had to say in the build-up to the final. Uh, as I say, I had a long conversation with my coach uh, before I decided to come back uh, playing. Uh, and we said that, you know, tennis had moved on slightly over the last sort of two or three years that I'd been, you know, away from the sport. And, um, yeah, we just had a very honest conversation, you know, saying it, it, we, we both thought that this is the way we saw, saw myself playing, you know, taking the ball a bit earlier, being aggressive. Um, using my serve a little bit more than I used to and, um, and just being tough to beat and fighting for every every point. This week I've had a bit of an injury and managed to kind of get through it, recover um, and yeah, just trying to enjoy each match, take each match as it comes. Um, I think both weeks I started to quite slowly so, so yeah, I'd say persistence is the key word. Uh, yeah, he's obviously a, a, a big guy, a big server, left-handed, so it'll be very tricky um, but uh, I say I beat him in the in the uh, in the group stages, um, so uh, yeah, I'll be, uh, I'll, be, I'll be yeah uh, I'll, I'll be looking forward to playing him against. If you let him kind of run you around the court and keep the rallies long, then it's going to be really tough to beat him, especially for, for kind of a big old lump like me. Um, so I, I just got to got to try and play my game a bit better than I did last time, and, and trust that that's good enough. He's been a bit harsh on himself, describing um, his physique as that of a big old lump. But clearly, they've, they've got different styles. We've got a sort of a little and large contest. Really interesting as well to hear Dan talking about how he's looking to evolve his game, take the ball early, be more aggressive. Clearly, that's worked this week. Yeah, it absolutely has. He has been aggressive from, from the get-go. He's not going to want to be out on court any longer than he has to be. Let's not forget it. Seven matches in seven days. So that's definitely going to work in favour of Dan. In terms of the matchup with the styles, it's very different. Certainly, Henry will be looking to, to serve very big indeed. That is one of his major weapons to try and get past Cox there. But Dan Cox is a phenomenal returner, so he will be looking to step in, take the ball early and take the time away and surprise Henry. So it's it's very interesting, as you said, to, to hear Dan talk about his game of ball because he is so very experienced. He's the eldest man 
in the field at 30 years of age and he will really be looking to draw on that experience now in this final. Yeah, and you touched on Henry's uh, injury. He, he mentioned the fact that he started the week quite slowly. He's had the wrist taped up, but he did say yesterday that it's not causing him too many problems. Um, so hopefully, from a physical point of view, he's going to be able to give 100%. Absolutely, and this is the last match of the week, so he's going to give it everything. It was it was on the forehand sometimes, it was hurting him. Like He was doubled over in, in, in pain earlier in the week, particularly against Billy Harris and against Dan. So um, it's great to see him here. It didn't bother him yesterday in his semi-final against Josh Paris, so it's great to see him back. And when he said that he progresses as the week goes on, then that's perfect for the league, isn't it? It absolutely is. Yeah, we're all set then. One more match. It should be a special one. Jenny, thank you. Let's head up to the commentary box one more time. This time around, it is Calvin alongside Gigi. Thank you to Marcus and thank you very much to Jenny. Yes, Calvin has done his coaching duties, his analysis duties. And now back, Calvin in the commentary box. Yeah, it's a hectic day for me. <laughs> um, I've had to try and get something to eat in the middle of all that as well. And my phone battery went, so I've had to run to my car and get my charger as well. So. Oh, wow, OK. But, but you're here. You, you've had some nourishment. You ready to go? Yeah, well, if you call Warm a bar of chocolate and a bit of Coca-Cola some nourishment, then yeah. Yeah, if there's any young children listening, no, that is not <laughs> nourishment. <laughs> but we're looking forward to this because it is the men's final. We have Dan Cox. It was third time lucky coming through in his third semi-final to reach the final of the UK Pro League. And for Henry, he might start slow, but he gets himself going. He did in week three, reaching the final, losing out to Anton Matusevic. And here he is again. But as Jenny rightly said, very different opponents for Henry to be facing in these different finals. Yeah, I think as well with Henry, in terms of how he plays, like you say, he sometimes starts slow. There's completely different characters. You couldn't get two more completely different characters than these two today where Dan I think it's important that he likes to keep his intensity up and keep churning out the wins no respite for his opponents whereas Henry probably sort of figures out how many wins he needs to get to the final uh, semi-finals and then just works on that basis he's, he's really laid back yeah he lost his first match this week Henry to George Houghton in straight sets he won his next couple against Jack Gibbons and Billy Harris he then would lose the match to Dan Cox just winning four games through that contest and then would win against Jack Findle Hawkins to his place in the semi-finals and then the straight sets victory over Josh Paris. How much do we look at that day four meeting Cox against Patton? Well, I spoke with Henry last night and he said not to read too much into it. He's, he's been struggling a bit with a wrist injury at the start of the week or in the middle of the week, sorry, and he said it was just so painful he could barely play in that match. So he said um, he doesn't think that would have too much impact. So... I guess we'll take his word on it and, and see how he plays. But with no rest because they're playing match after match and with such pain, he, is that enough time for pain he, to heal and disappear? He, he told me that the physios have worked wonders with his arm, so um, we'll see how that pans out. He's still got the strapping on it there, as you can see. Yeah, you can see that purple kinesio tape and then yep. the, the wristband over the top to keep it in place. Mm -hmm. So here we go. It's a third career meeting between the two. It's the second at U Pro K Pro League, the second this week, and it's Dan Cox to serve. So what are the respective game plans for both players here, Calvin? I think Dan will he'll want to take the ball early. He said yesterday he's looking at trying to take the ball early and use the width of the court more. So he did that really well yesterday against Luke, so I think we'll see more of that. Henry will want to, he's going to have to serve well. If he doesn't serve well, I think he's in trouble. But um, he'll want to keep the rally short. He'll not want to be rallying 10, 15 balls with Coxie. So um, he'll want to hit some big balls, get some early striking. 30 years of age now, Dan Cox. Five foot seven against this six foot five inch pattern. As we see there, he's really going after both those two balls. I mean, even, even against any opponent, Henry's got no real interest in going 15 shot rally. So <laughs> um, that'll be no different here. He's a real ball of intensity, Dan Cox. From the word go. I'll have a chatter with the chair at some point. Yeah. Standard. generally find some, something to 30, have a 50. bit of a complaint about. Some players need that though, don't they? Yeah, it's, I think it keep, keeps them keyed in. 
But it is strange, yesterday I was on court when, when he played Luke, he, I don't know whether he intends to do it or or not, but he definitely sort of creates an intensity on the court that you don't get with other opponents. You can feel the tension when he's there, when he's playing. It's almost like a little bit of what I'd call competitive charisma, really. He makes the whole thing about him, and, and that's a skill in itself. He hits that shot a lot, you know, but with both, we can go cross court or line on it where it looks like it's a bit out of control, but he rarely makes a load of errors on it. And he rarely misses it by far when he does miss it. It's even quite an intense walk, isn't it? Oh, for sure, yeah. <laughs> Something else that you see with Henry, and I've noticed this when he's been practicing, when I've been on court with him practicing, and when he plays doubles, he has a phenomenal wingspan. That when he's at the net, he covers about 95%. He leaves you about three inch inside the sideline where you can pass him on. I mean, there is a lot of him at 65. Yeah, he's a re really good doubles player. Long levers. Yeah. When you, you'll see players hit a passing shot and you think, oh, that's, that's a great shot. And they'll just reach out an arm and chop off the volley pretty comfortably. <laughs> and he's got what it seems strange. Uh, I never know why people fast. say this, but I'll, I'm going to say it now. Is that he's got a really good touch for a big man. <laughs> I don't know why people think that big men can't have good <laughs> touches. But, um, he does have a really nice touch around the net. He's got a break point opportunity in the first game of this final. it was wide and Henry Patton said someone's got to take a set off Dan Cox he hasn't dropped one all week and Henry Patton's made the first little dent by getting the break in the first game yeah and I think if the, it, I'm, I'm absolutely certain that if Henry thought it was wide it was wide um, he definitely won't have hooked him there um, and also if he's trying to get into his head he, he won't achieve that with Henry either I don't think anyone can get in Henry said he's one of the most chilled out people you could ever come across. Uh, uh, the contrast is incredible. Isn't yeah. It? Just as they pass it, not just <laughs> the height difference, but the relaxed nature yeah. of, of the walk and the demeanour yeah. of Patton and then Cox saying, that wasn't wide. And just, again, Henry that Patton's sort of intensity that he exudes. Uh, I was thinking earlier, the, he's literally just about the only person that challenges line calls mm. on these things. And I don't know whether the other guys are a bit soft, they're letting their mates get away with bad line calls or whether he genuinely thinks they are, I don't know. Henry Patton, 24 years of age, back-to-back -back finals. He spent a large part of the start of the year. Henry Patton out in India, playing a lot of matches, both <laughs> singles and doubles, which is why he only entered the UK Pro League at week three.
I think he had a pretty good trip there as well. I think he made a final of the doubles and then I think he may have made a semi of the singles as well. C50. It's going at him there, do you think? Or? It's a great get, though, scampering up. Describes himself as a terrier. Yeah, probably about right, isn't it? Oh, it's a lovely change up. 14-15. Steel and silk there from Henry. Huge forehand followed by a lovely little drop shot. He has come out. Firing Henry Patton and consolidates his break and leads to love. Yeah, and it's also when we start talk about Dan when he said he wants to stand further up the court, take a position further up the court. When Henry when Henry comes out playing like the way he's done, you can stand wherever you want. He's, he's hitting winners past you, so he's kind of taken them so far. He's taken the match out of the hand of of Dan Cox. It's it's all on Henry's racket at the minute. Who's there more pressure on? Dan Cox because it's his first final. He's been trying to get here in the third semi-final. Patton because it's his second final. I, I don't think Henry feels pressure in any situation <laughs> at, at all ever. So <laughs> unless he feels it on the inside, he's, <laughs> he's never. I know him relatively well, and he's never shown any sign of feeling pressure. <laughs> That's a big great shot again. I remember when, when he went to India, I was Luke was practicing with him um, a couple of days before, and I was saying, like, where are you going? And he's like, I'm going to India. And, and I was like, all right, did you, how's the visa thing going? He's like, I, I don't know, I've got to go down to London either today or tomorrow to get one. <laughs> and he was flying, like, in 48 hours. <laughs> so not only had he not had one yet, he hadn't decided which of the next two days he was going to go to get one. Phenomenal tennis so far. And I imagine that could really frustrate someone like Dan Cox when he looks across the other yeah. side of the net and he sees someone who looks so relaxed. Yeah, and also it, it, it could remind him a little bit of his defeats to Anton because what's happened in those matches is that Anton's come out and just blown him away early doors and just set his stall out and there might be a feeling of this is happening again. But he's got so much experience, he, he'll know how to problem solve. He'll, he'll have different tactics up his sleeve, I would think, to try and change this. And realistically, uh, Henry can't continue playing like this. If he continues playing like this, then he's a contender for Wimbledon this year. Oh, helped a little bit there by Cox. Last 40. Yeah. And as we saw, that's the kind of the opposite of what I'm talking about with Henry's wingspan. That Dan there, Dan's volley there was—he was on the, a bit of a stretch because he, he doesn't have a huge wing, obviously, because of his size. And he was stretched, and he was really not far out of the middle of the court. Just lost a little bit of control of the racket head and pushed it long. There is no answer to that. 
It's been spectacular stuff from Henry Patton, three games in, and he leads by a double break and three love in the final. The final, week four, UK Pro League, and this man in your picture, Henry Patton, is having a blinder. Played a spectacular three games, blown Dan Cox away, still very early stages. But he's leading by three games to love, but the question will be, can he keep playing at this level? Well, I'm, I'm going to stick my neck out and say I think he's played the best three games in Pro League history. Just, just right there. That was... Wow. <laughs> I can't imagine anyone's played three better games in a row. Four games. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the downside to being this relaxed? I think it can work the other way. In that, so if you're so relaxed and you don't feel any pressure at all, what you'll tend to get as a rule is that type of player will give away sloppy points when when they think it's not so important. So they won't make sloppy errors maybe when it's juice or or thirty all or that kind of thing. But say they're thirty fifteen up and they'll throw one away there, and maybe a sloppy game when it's you know, sort of two all or something. And you don't imagine a more intense player would do that because they're focused on every single point. But it also helps, to be fair, when you've got a serve like Henry. So even when his concentration goes a bit, he's always going to get three points on the serve. Forty love. Clean hold from Henry Patton. Patton this wonderful start from four. Henry Patton continues. He consolidates his second break and leads by four games to love. Kind of a foothold in it here. I think Dan, it's a big game where definitely can't afford to throw another break away. yet to drop a set. It's been such a good week for Dan Cox. He wasn't here in week three. He was away on the tour. But he will get his highest ever finish. Week one, fourth. Week two, third. Dan Cox. Clean hold from Dan Cox. His first game on the board in this Patton final, but Henry Patton, after this blistering start, leads with a double break and four games to one.
the final day of week four of the UK Pro League. The man in your picture there, Henry Patton, has gone off, got off to a spectacular start, playing the best three games, according to Calvin Betton, in UK Pro League history. A big question now, though. Can Love he keep it. it going? Well, uh, interesting that that last game was, was kind of what I was talking about there. Although it wasn't a huge game, it was, it was fall of up and he can afford to lose one. He kind of, the last two points in particular, he kind of just brushed them aside. He just blocked his return, let Dan knock a volley off and then missed his return. And It's easy in that circumstance to lose momentum. E even at fall of up, you can lose momentum and you, then you're thinking it wasn't, say, if he lost his serve heater, which he may not. Um, you're thinking maybe the last game was what set the, set the foundations for losing this one because he let his level drop a little bit. Huge second serve. When you get that angle of the court, you can see the pace that it comes through at. I was wondering earlier in the Luke Johnson match, did you move position to see more of the court? Yeah, yeah. If you sit next to where the chairs are originally, the if you notice the little pro league um, sign on the net, it blocks about a third of the court off where you sat down. So. 40, and that's why I watched from the uh, balcony in, in the last match that was just on now, because I just, I just can't see it when I'm sat on the court. to 15 and Patton eases his way five games, to one. five games to one in this opening set of the final so plenty of work for Cock to do plenty of time and as we've said from the start very experienced player in Dan Cox you also know that with this format of best of three sets but the third set being a champions tie break that even after even if he loses this set 6-1 or 6-2 he's still a set and a tie break away from winning the title it's not like he has to come and win two full sets Great volley, nice hands. 15 love. The problem with what Dan might find though is that he's he's not going to get many free points from his serve. So even to try and get back in this, he's really going to have to work, earn himself the points. Seems to have got a little bit of a foothold now, though, doesn't he? All his own serve and digging in a bit here. I think again they're the type of points that I was talking about where he set the point up with a beautiful return and if, if that is if it's three all in the score if it's three all 15 all Henry doesn't miss that volley I'm, I'm certain of that and he doesn't miss it in that fashion it just kind of looked like uh, I'm five one up 30 love down I'll I'll settle for five two and serve my serve this set out kind of point And 90% of the time it doesn't make any difference, but in sometimes when matches can turn quickly, that tends to be one. Back to back, love holds from Dan Cox. Leads, five games to but he's still got it all to do because very shortly Henry Patton will be serving for the first set in this final, leading by five games to two.
We're very happy to say that joining us courtside, Henry Patton, who closed out the first set 6-2. Now, Henry, Calvin alongside me described the first three games as the best three games in UK Pro League tennis history. How happy were you with that first set of tennis? Yeah, um, I'll be honest, I don't really remember much of it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, obviously very happy to, to get out ahead and start the set in that way. And as Calf, um, this normally be a situation where I'd ask you anything that you want to do better in this set, but... I don't think there's any, anything you can do better, is there? Yeah, I think just try and keep my composure, keep keep it rolling. Um, you know, Dan's a good fighter, so um, I'm expecting a tough second set. Are you as relaxed as you come across, Henry? Um, yeah, pretty relaxed right now. I mean, sat down, change events, final of the pro series. <laughs> Life's good, you know? Well, well we, we hope for your sake it continues to be good. Henry, yeah. thank you and good luck. Thanks a lot. Cheers, Henry. Thanks. Well, it's exactly the case, isn't it? What do you want to change in the second set? Well, nothing would be the answer. So let's flip this to Dan Cox. What can he do? Uh, look, those first two or three games, I don't think there's anything he could have done. But what can Dan Cox do differently to get himself into this final? It's tough because of the way that Henry's playing. He's playing well in the way that Henry plays. Is that He's taking the, the rallies ashore. He's taking the, the, the racket out of Dan's hand second at the minute. Set. So Go. he's going to have to try something different. One that something he could try is changing his return position, like mixing it up so Henry never gets the same look when he's looking to start his service action. Maybe start off further to the left, further to the right, and change it every single point. So if Henry loses rhythm, that's something he'll probably maybe try. <laughs> something else he can maybe do is maybe change up his, his paces Stop and his it. rhythms but the problem with doing that for Dan is his, his, his primary asset is his ball striking he's a beautiful ball striker so if he starts doing that he's going to take away the th one of the things he does well and the problem is that Henry's just striking the ball cleaner than him and bigger than he is to an interview with Dan Cox about returning to tennis and he was asked what's different and he said the players they hit so big each and every yeah. one of them hits a massive ball yeah yeah I'm sure he's thinking though, maybe the, the the cogs will be turning his head as to what he can do differently. <laughs> My word. <laughs> it's absolutely huge. And that, that's the problem there. So knowing Dan, as, if, as Henry stepped up to that one, you were thinking, where, where's he, what, what are the likely shots that he can play here? And you think he's probably going to hook it cross court and maybe then Dan can go back down the line. And what you didn't imagine him doing was just creaming a forehand winner line. Well, the wrist is feeling loose. Yeah. Maybe we need to get ourselves some of that tape, GG. That's what <laughs> <laughs> kind of tennis you're playing with. first game of this final, which is only some 30 minutes ago. Dan Cox finds himself up against it and facing break points. Yeah, one of the things that Dan can't be doing is giving unforced errors away. Especially on those type of shots where he's not really going for anything. He's, he's, not, he's not trying to hit a backhand line winner and it's just missing. He's, that's basically a rally ball that he's netted. It suddenly becomes a big game now, even though it's the first game of the second set. This again can be one of the problems for someone so intense. If you get that really intense personality, you, you kind of your your predisposition when you're losing a match six two is to blame yourself and your own tennis and think that it, it's it's you that's doing something wrong. I don't think he, he often can't don't have the capacity to go, well there's nothing much I can do at the minute, which probably is the case. 
One of the things he's got in his favour is he's beaten Henry a couple of times, and so he knows how to beat him. Whether he knows how to beat this version of, of Henry Patton that w that's come out today is another matter. The Wimbledon winning version. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's even angry at that. Such an important game this for Dan Cox. Another problem is, I was going to say that you know Dan can just hang around and, and hope that Henry's level drops, but the problem is the way Henry's playing at the minute, his level can probably drop one level, and it's still pretty good. He's going to have to drop two or three levels to bring this match back to a level, level playing field. So even if we say that this is kind of 10 out of 10 for Henry, even if he drops a little bit, he's still going to be 8 out of 10, which is still going to be a pretty good level of tennis. You see, that kind of thing tends to happen in those situations. He's just pressing a little bit too much. He needs to get this game on the board. Yeah, it's huge to this game. Good week for Dan Cox coming through his matches with relative ease until this set drop. The most games he had dropped in a set was five on day five to George Houghton. One of these enormous forehands brings up a third break point opportunity in this first game of set two of the, of the men's final. The thing is with that shot there, that, was, that could have been a metre more, metre closer into the middle of the court and it's still a clean winner, he's hit it so hard. So not only is he hitting huge, he's also hitting balls close to the line as well. The winner will take home £4,250 and 18 points, the runner-up £3,500 and 15 points. can turn this around and get the win. He'll go second overall in the leaderboard and for Henry Patton it would be third. And remember the top eight qualify automatically for finals week in December. Kind of look, kind of make Dan look a little bit underpowered, can't he? At the minute, like it's like Dan's hitting into a force 50 gale, force wind, and Henry's going downwind. Fourth break point opportunity in this first game. to rely on big first serves at the minute yeah. to get him out of trouble, isn't he? The problem is as well, it's not just the winners that Henry's hitting. You know, they're phenomenal in themselves. When they get into a rally, what we sort of refer to as rally threshold, is that if you've got two players having a rally down the middle or cross court, and one of them is hitting at 75 mile an hour and the other one's hitting at 70, that's going to take a toll on the player who's hitting at 70 mile an hour because suddenly <laughs> their shots are being affected by the other player's oh, ball. No, they're not hitting at the same pace as each other so suddenly if you hit 10 balls at 75 Dan's then on the defence and he's, he's, his pace is going to drop and Henry's is going to get up because he's, he's getting more confident he's getting more time on the ball This is the longest game of the final so far such an important one for Dan Cox
Closes it out. That's why we get the come on at the end of it. How important might that turn out to be for the 30-year-old Dan Cox in his first UK Pro League final? He fends off four break points to close out for the hold first game, second set. Yeah, he's, um, that's a big one, that one, because it's now, apart from anything else, it's now going to be the first time that Henry's been behind in a set. I don't think he was, I think he won the first couple of points in the first game of the match, so he's, he's never been behind in a set in this match, so will that affect how he's playing? I'm looking at the set one summary, just making very good reading for Henry Patton when he closed out that 25-minute set. Yeah, when he's serving at 73% and winning 85% of them, then that's going to be tough to beat. And even when he misses it, he's still winning 80% of those points as well. So. be interesting to see if Dan can get a little bit of a lead in Henry's service game. I mean, the cadence of the match starts to change a little bit then. Lovely shot, lovely timing. Love 15. He's very good at that one on the backhand where he can kind of just catch the ball and there's hardly any backswing. He just punches it. But when you can do that, you know. straight after, and it's a game changer. That second ace of the final. See, there's the difficulty now that Dan is making unforced errors, but he's really got to go for those shots. I think it'll be in his head that the way Henry's on, if, if he just rallies, then Henry's just going to hit a winner. Closes out the game, holds to 15. One pattern, one game. This looks very comfortable. We've seen one moment of frustration from Patton in this final so far. Well, the good news for Dan Cox as well is new balls at the end of this game, so <laughs> you can expect Henry Patton to be hitting even bigger once he gets some new balls out of the can. That's a lovely angle on serve. 15 up. He's really accurate on the first serve, actually. I know he's that one was on court yesterday. He's having to be. It's basically his first serves keeping him in this match at the minute. Another round ball, though. You, you won't have minded the couple of unforced errors in the last game because he was going for something on them. But
15. I don't know what that was about. A little bit of industrial language, maybe, that the umpires had a word with them about. Signs of frustration, isn't there? Feels like there's no way through this at the minute. He's now getting out rallied by Henry. That's, that's when it becomes a real problem for Dan Cock when, when Henry's winning the short rallies and the longer ones. Yeah, the defender four break points in his opening service game. There's a, a couple more here. A couple of times there, I thought Henry might have got in. He had a couple of big shots, Dan was floating them back. If someone who volleys so well as Henry does, then but it might chop them off. He must be feeling really good about his ground stroke game at the minute. Oh, my word. It's unplayable. <laughs> Yeah, it is. That's the only way you can say it. And I think the reaction there from Coxie sort of acknowledges that. Patton gets the break, leads in the second set by two games to one. Having threatened to make the breakthrough in the first game in the second set, Henry Patton has done it in game three, leading now. You can see there on the score by a set and a break, and continuing to be, at times, Calvin Betton unplayable. Yeah, I, I, we're, we're now at a stage where I think Dan's best hope is probably to start being solid and hope that Henry's game drops, because just, just make some balls and hope that Henry starts missing, because... He's trying all sorts of things, and Henry's still just hitting clean winners. And you've got to hope that it's probably his last resort now is the scoreboard pressure, where he, he, once Henry gets close to winning, does he start getting a bit tight? Just stay relatively close and see if he gets tight. There's not much more he can do at the minute. But this is the problem as well with not having a huge serve in this type of situation. Because say Henry was playing as well as he is, but Dan had a big first serve of his own, he'd probably still be a, he'd probably be able to to win a few games just on that basis, make a few first serves and stay in touch. But at the minute, his only way well not at the minute, generally his only way of winning points is to rally and hope Henry misses. Huge second serve. There as well. I'm still a bit miffed at why he's still taking that return position up of, of well inside the baseline or, or trying to make contact with the ball well inside the baseline. He's he's had no success on it at all really on Henry's second serve by doing that. And he keeps mistiming them as well.
The problem he's had is he struggled to string together two or three of those type of points in a row, hasn't he? And again, this is the issue with when you're playing someone like Henry, he's got this huge serve that when, when Dan gets a foot in the door on something like that, we'll see what he comes up with here on the serve. Morning. There we go, that kind of thing. So you kind of get yourself a little bit pumped up, you get a little bit of a fist pump out because you've played a good point and it's taken away from you like that. Yeah, so it's a third ace for Patton. I don't think it's necessarily been the aces though, has it? He must have had a load of service winners where they're just unreturnable serves. Yeah, he's only dropped two points from his first serve and two with his second. That's how cleanly he's been holding. And that's through the course of the entire match. 14, 30. Yeah. Exemplary serving. Your winners today, Emily Appleton winning her third UK Pro League week out of four finals. Josh Paris finishing third. A lot of yeah. damage from Patton, and he holds to 30, consolidates his break, and leads 3 1. I, th I was just thinking there that if you, if you told Dan after he played Anton, I think in maybe the second week, and Anton really took the game away from him and didn't give him any chance at all, if you told Dan that somebody was going to play even better than that against him, I think he would have been um, pretty concerned. But I'd say this, this is at the minute. Well, Patton won just four games off. Dan Cox and they met on day four this week on Thursday. But as Henry said, he was in an awful lot of pain with his wrist that day, left handed. Love. Says he enjoys coaching Dan Cox, set up the Lincoln Tennis Academy. He's got three tennis courts there and managed to get his coaching badges done at the age of 20 when he had time out for wrist surgery. Have made that shot there, then Dan might have packed his bags and <laughs> gone home. Slice to bring him in and the really nice down the line passing shot. And you heard Henry say great shot. Yeah. He'd know, wouldn't he, in this match? He'd get enough of him himself. Love hold of the second set for Dan Cox. It keeps him to within a break of Henry Patton, but it is Patton with the set and the break, 3-2 in the second.
Welcome back to finals day at the UK Pro League. Now, we saw at the end of that fifth game, Dan Cox, just as you can see now, around the groin area, a little bit of discomfort, and he has actually requested that the physio come on. I wonder whether it's something he did in that point, maybe, because he's not shown any sign, has he, up until that, of, of having any sort of issues. So I wonder whether he's, he's turned or just pulled something in, in the point that after, after which he started holding it. So he'll go through the assessment so the physio can work out exactly yeah. where the problem might be and where, the, where he's feeling the pain when he's moving. Yeah. Well, maybe he just thinks they've worked wonders for Henry, these physios. They might <laughs> be able to bring, bring him back on side. It's not great if it's the groin because no matter how great a physio you are, I don't think you're healing any sort of major injury with the groin in two or three minutes. Well, she seemed to be motioning that she could put a little bit of tape on. Right, okay. Maybe they'd have to leave the court to do that just to see if they can manage it. That's exactly what they're going to do, just try and yeah. hold it all together, stop anything from getting worse. Yeah. As Henry Patton just continues to look very relaxed. <laughs> Well, Dan Cox has been giving it everything and a little bit more with what he's having to do to get some of these balls back off the, especially the pattern forehand. Yeah. He has had to do a lot of running, hasn't he? But you never know with something like this as well. I'm, I'm certain that it's not the w why Dan's done this, but these little breaks, they can change the momentum if, if something's going so one-sided as this one is then. And how hard for it, and Dan Cox is so experienced as we've, we've talked about, but how hard is it when you win a match so easily, 6-3, six, 6-1, six, and then you come out to this to sort of get your head around exactly what's going on and why it's not going anything like it did the previous time? Yeah, it's really tough as well. One of the reasons is because you kind of, you know how to beat them when you're winning easy, so you you settled into that and you never it never enters your head what might happen if you're not winning so easy and if they're winning, so... It's almost like he's playing a different player now than the player he played the other day. So it can be really frustrating because there's part of you also that will be thinking, well, it must be me because I, I beat this guy so easy 72 hours ago. Henry has had a couple of glances to his left to see exactly what's going on and where yeah. the problem is and possibly where he can e exploit it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's it. That's a good spot from our producer. The physio has actually wrapped Dan Cox to his chair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that was the plan. There we go. He's been released. <laughs> we'll be able to continue. We'll obviously keep, as you were watching, a close eye on the movement of, of Cox to see if he's, he's hindered at all. This time the bench was avoided. He's moving there. I wonder whether he's letting them know. Get a move on. I'm ready to play. Well, I think he is taped up and, and ready to go. And we shall see if that little pause in play does affect anything. We will see how the movement is of, of Dan Cox because he's up against it. Cox is setting a breakdown to Henry Patton. Interesting to see how this game goes now after that little break. made about 99% of those, hasn't he, in this match? The backhand that Henry does, he just kind of just leans on it. There's, there's no backswing at all because he's so big and got so much weight behind it. He can just 
which just lean into the into the backhand. It still comes off a huge shot. Times it really well also. That one down the line, I think it's a really nice shot that he hits. Thirty all, yeah. Has he been thirty, 30 all before? Did so. Maybe once, I think, early. Maybe in the second, in the first set. Had that break with the medical timeout. Still has the break in the second set. It was just <laughs> the huge serve there. It's really been going into the body of. Cox with the serves this game. Yeah, and it's al always dangerous that when you play somebody who's who's a bit smaller and they've got compact shots like like Dan has because they can shift their body out of the way, you tend to avoid body serves for that type of player. But if you can hit it that hard and that accurate, then it <laughs> doesn't matter where it goes, it's <laughs> probably winning you the point. Yeah, frustration there from Dan Cox. Saw a little opening at 30 all. A couple of big serves gets Patton out of trouble. And more importantly, the 24-year-old consolidates his break, and he's two holes of serve away from being the week four champion. Yeah, he's Dan's running out of time a little bit, isn't he? If he's going to turn this round. As well, because he's serving so well, Henry. He's like these return games. Now he's a break up. These return games are almost freebies. He can have a swing, really relaxed swing, and just have a, a pop at them. And if if he loses, then it doesn't matter because he's holding serve so comfortably anyway. That's the third ace of the match from Dan Cox. He's lent a lot on his first serve in this final. It's only 48 hours ago as well that Henry was playing a match in his group where if he lost it in straight sets, he would have come fifth in the group. And if he won it, he came second in the group. And he ended up winning it. And he's here now two games away from winning the whole tournament. So when I talk about that rally threshold a bit ago, I think this is the difference from when Henry played Anton a couple of weeks ago. That Anton is bigger guy, he has more strength, and so his rally ball is bigger than Dan's. So it doesn't allow Henry enough ta as much time to have these huge swings as he's having here. It's easier to hit a winner off a ball that's coming at 55 mile an hour than it is one that's coming at 75 mile an hour. Two big points coming up here now, because if you get the feeling if Dan doesn't hold this game, then it's it's pretty much all over. Hasn't been able to get a break point on the pattern serve in this final. Patton already had eight, converted three of them.
frustration of missing the first serve. Yeah, a hell of a forehand, wasn't it? frustration as you'll get from Henry. <laughs> Twitch of the nose. I think that's what you'll find frustrating, that as, as well as Henry's played, he hasn't quite played that great himself either, Dan. Just balls like that, where he's hit a decent first serve, there's an opening that he can go for, and he's just netted them every time, or just put them wide. Oh, he's... Ooh. That foul on the court, Henry Patton. I mean, he's got a fair point there when he says he thought about it and then called it. He didn't, he didn't call it straight away, did he? I don't know whether it was in or out. Patton leads four games to three. But that is a hold of serve for Dan Cox. Still has got the break, Henry Patton. And he leads in the second set of the final by four games to three. The Dan Maskell Tennis Centre in Loughborough University, home to the UK Pro League for the first four weeks of the competition. This your men's final, Henry Patton, two games from the title. It'd be interesting to see how the dynamic just changed a bit there now. Henry got really frustrated about that line call. Will it affect him or will it? Love 15. Four on there looked a little bit of frustration in it, didn't it? Ooh. Love thirty. Definitely does look more frustrated than he was earlier. It seems that has affected him a little bit. Fifteen thirty. There's that wingspan I'm talking about there. It's, it was actually a pretty good passing shot, but he just reaches his arm across and covers so much of the net. 
It's been set up by a couple of enormous forehands. Yeah. He butchers those, doesn't he? Love 30 to 30 all. Serve again of the body. The miss hit helped him. It gave him a different type of ball to hit. He still would have backed him to make it. cry of emotion we've yeah. heard from Henry Patton as he turns it round from love 30 to game point. I think again that's where Cox will find that frustrating that the game's got a little bit tighter now and he's giving points away with unforced errors. Yeah, if Henry hits three clean winners then fair enough. Can't do much about it but the one thing he'll really despise himself doing at this stage he's giving away sloppy unforced errors in rally balls He will be mightily relieved to have come through that game. Patton Love 30 five, holds. Three. Henry Patton is now a game away from being crowned week four champion. Really good resilience from Henry there as well. He's frustrated at that line call. He thinks he should have had the game previous. He loved 30 down on his own serve. And then just played pretty much a perfect game from that stage onwards. There's that backhand again that he just leans into, just puts his body weight behind it, leans forward, it's a clean winner again. So Dan Cox serving to stay in the final. Yeah. Absolute force today. Love it. It's not only the attacking side of it on that shot there, it's hard to do any damage on it when he goes there because he, he seems to just redirect it and soak up the pace and send it back. You can't even attack it that well. points like that just to get through that for And you took out the umpire in the process. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lovely slice. He's now hitting slice back and passing shots from behind himself. From the title, Henry Patton, runner-up in week three, losing out to Anton Matusevic. Matusevic is not here this week as he had exams to study for, then take. Let's take Henry Patton third overall in the league. Take 
table. Top eight qualify by right. Shot. He got really lucky there, though, with that net cord. That ball was going wide, was it? Hit the net cord and bounced back in, into the court. And with that miss, it brings up match point. Henry Patton looking to go one step further than week three. And he's one point away from doing just that, the 24-year-old. Advantage pattern. What a way to bring up match point yeah, number it's, two. It's the only way you said it earlier. It's just unplayable. I don't really know how you can... There is no defence to that type of tennis. Match point. And with that, your week four champion is crowned. It is game, set and match to Henry Patton. A straight sets victory over Dan Cox. He lost to him earlier in the week. He was just too good today. 6-2, 6-3. Henry Patton crowned champion in week four. Week four winner. Yeah, it was phenomenal tennis. That's the, the, the best that anyone... Anton's played some good tennis in the first couple of weeks, but that, I think that one single match is the best that I've seen anyone play in any of these four weeks of tournaments that we've had so far. It was phenomenal level and, and wouldn't have been out of place at a main tour event, just that one match that we've seen there. And numbers that Henry Patton will be quite pleased to, to look down and see. He didn't give away any break points on his own serve. He managed to keep the numbers up on his own and he got the job done in straight sets. Yeah, I mean, if, you, if Henry's winning 85% of points on his first serve, that's, that's unplayable tennis and 58% on his second serve. It, there's, it'd be a strange one for Dan to analyse when he gets home and wants to think about it because there's nothing really he could have done different and he's just taken a 6-2, 6-3 defeat. It really was one of those days for Henry Patton. He came out firing, a sore wrist had been troubling him earlier in the week and that's why he said look don't really think about that loss to, to Dan Cox don't read too much into it because I was in so much pain during that contest yeah I spoke to him last night and I asked him if he fancied his chances and he was remarkably confident he said that he, there was nothing to read into the match on Thursday and his wrist was feeling a lot better now and he thought he was going to win the match and you know I took him for face value for it and he um, he's, was good for his word he certainly was. And here is your week four winner, Henry Patton, in conversation with Marcus. Well, Henry, many, many congratulations. That's a, a wonderful victory. Where does that performance stand in your list of best evers? Yeah, it's definitely up there. I think it's uh, definitely the best tennis I've played at, at any of these events. Um, so, yeah, to do it in the final is pretty satisfying, yeah. Was it just one of those days when you came out and everything felt right? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, I've, I feel like I've been building up to it all week. And when you play this many matches, you're, you're seeing the ball pretty well. Um, so, yeah, it's always kind of in the locker. But, 
but yeah, I was, I was obviously happy after the first set. Well, it was just winner after winner. You told us all at the end of the first set that you're a pretty relaxed guy. There was one disputed call midway through the second that got your attention. How did you channel your emotions after that? Um, yeah, I mean, it happens. You, you, yeah, I kicked up a bit of a fuss there. Um, probably unnecessarily, but um, yeah, it, you know, it happens in tennis, wherever you play. Um, so yeah, you, you just got to get on with it, really. Yeah. And of course, you'd played Dan earlier in the week and, and he'd beaten you. You've had problems with your wrist, but what did you learn from that match that perhaps helped um, today in the final? Well, I mean, first of all, congrats to Dan for, for, for an unbelievable week. You know, he, he didn't drop a set in, in our group. Um, and yeah, was really the dominant player this week. So yeah, congrats to him. Sorry, it didn't pan out quite how you want it in the final. Um, but look, when you play Dan, he gives you opportunities. Um, you, you just have to play well consistently for, for an hour and a half or however long it takes because he just maintains his level so well. Um, he's so experienced in the big moments. Um, so, yeah, it's tough, but, but I, I knew it was doable. And a word about the wrist, which threatened to be a problem, but seems to have got better as the yeah. week's gone on. Who gets the credit for that? Massive thanks to the physios. Uh, Kaylee, in, in particular, has been, been really helping me out. Um, stay, staying on for a few extra hours uh, yesterday. So, yeah, massive thanks to her. It's, it's feeling a million times better than it did in the middle of the week. And, and just a final thought, you're riding high, top three, I think, now in the league table. So, presumably, this has whetted your appetite for further successes in weeks five, six, seven and eight? Oh, massively. I mean, any opportunity you get to, to play these tournaments, uh, you, you can't really pass them up when you're, when you're floating around kind of a 1,000 in the rankings. Um, the money that, that they've managed to raise here is just unparalleled um, by anything that, that, you know, the LTA offers really. So, yeah, um, you, you can't pass, pass these up. Fantastic. Well, many congratulations. It's time for you to go and collect your trophy. And uh, Dan, once he's checked the football scores or whatever you're doing, your, your runners-up medal awaits. So commiserations to Dan. Congratulations to Henry. Uh, Jenny is going to join me as the players head up to the podium. Uh, the tournament director, Dom Hayes, is uh, waiting to present them with their prizes. What a performance from Henry Patton, Jenny. Oh, it really was quite incredible. It was actually really fun to watch. And when someone is, is hitting the ball that well, it's, it is so fun to watch. We were all watching it around in the tournament office and around here as well, and watching it live, the way that he struck the ball there, it was hit with such pace and venom. And the fact is that he managed to keep up that level throughout the entire match. And that's something that maybe Dan Cox was hoping would dip. And uh, Cox is so good at taking his opportunities, but there, Patton just didn't give him any. Yeah, frustration, of course, for Dan, who didn't play as well as he'd have liked to. But I was intrigued at the start of the second set when, obviously, Henry was in the driving seat. He had breakpoint opportunity. Dan managed to hold on to that game. And you're thinking maybe there's going to be a little shift in the balance of power, but not a bit of it. No, not at all. I mean, the, the fact that those opportunities came and went for Henry, you thought, mm, OK, maybe he will dip, but he didn't at all. And then, and especially for someone like Dan, who who gets pumped up whenever he's coming back from behind. He's such a fighter, always has been. And that will have been in the back of Henry's mind as well. But he stood so firm throughout the entire contest. He did. Let's have a look at that fast start from uh, Henry because, you know, before the match we chatted, I think everybody was just edging towards a Cox victory. Within four or five minutes, we realised it was not the script that had been anticipated. Yeah, I honestly think that the, the start here from Henry actually shocked everybody because it was just on another level. He was seeing the ball so big. I don't really think he even made an error. Cox could barely even get a point at this stage. It was it was so tough for him and it's a bit of a shock to the system as well. When you're in a final, it's the last match and obviously Dan had been to the semi-finals twice before. He made it here, wanted to put in a good performance. He'd beaten him earlier in the week as well and then suddenly yeah. Henry's coming out with this type of tennis. And I mentioned at the start of the second set, there was an opportunity for Patton to break straight away. Cox held on, but second time around, he got the break and that proved significant. Yeah, this was absolutely crucial. And you saw there the reaction from Dan. He was quite disappointed because he knew how good Henry had been serving as well in this match. We said coming into it that that would be absolutely key. And it was interesting, his forehand too was working so well. We actually had a quick chat with Josh Paris when we came off after his um, third place victory. And he said when he played... Uh, Henry yesterday, it was just, it was so difficult to face that whippy lefty forehand because it's so hard to predict where the ball is going. The ability for him to drive that down the line when you expect the cross court 
is a real weapon. Yeah, and let's give further credit to the physios here who have managed to protect that wrist and goodness me, it's paid dividends for him today. Oh, it really has. How he's managed to come back and, and, and play the way he did tonight is just quite remarkable. But also he's clearly been managing it well. That's not easy to do on and off the court. And uh, it's, it's certainly worked in his favour. And he's, he's played the, the league situation very well indeed this week. OK, well, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll wrap up all the stories of week four, catch up on those league standings. And uh, Jenny will have her final thoughts as well. So see you shortly. Welcome back for the last time to the Dan Maskell Tennis Centre at Loughborough University. It's been finals day. It's been another very successful day for Emily Appleton, who came through in two very tight sets against Elise Maloney. What a wonderful rivalry those two have developed over the past few weeks. The men's third place playoff saw Josh Paris come through against Luke Johnson. And just moments ago, Henry Patton went one better than in week three when he was the runner up. This time he found some vintage form to defeat the previously undefeated Dan Cox, who'd won six out of six, but uh, had no answer to Patton's brilliance. Now, in terms of the standings, well, that's the top four look for the women. Emily Appleton, at the start of the week, had 51 points, so we can now give her another 18 for being the winner. So she climbs to 69. Uh, Liz Maloney increases her own tally as well. Fred Christie, bit of a mixed week for her. We haven't seen Beth Gray recently, but those are the top four. Still plenty of time and opportunities for others to get themselves into the automatic top eight places, which will guarantee your participation in finals week in December. As far as the men are concerned, well, these are up-to-date figures. Anton Matusovic not here this week. He's been taking his exams and uh, hopefully they've gone well for him. Dan Cox now into second place with 37 points altogether. Josh Paris climbs to third. And there is Henry Patton, who's only played in two weeks, but a runner-up followed by victory uh, means that uh, he is sitting pretty just ahead of Billy Harrison, George Houghton. The halfway point, of course, Jenny, in terms of qualifying. So we've seen who's um, had the fast starts. No need for others to panic yet, but obviously it's getting to a point where a couple of big weeks can really push you towards the promised land of finals week in December. Oh, they most definitely can. And I think Henry Patton is the, the clear example of that finalist in one winner of the next. And suddenly he's sitting pretty in fourth place with a great chance of qualifying for the big finals week, week nine. And uh, certainly I'm sure many of them will want to, to play more, but it, that's what it's all about. When you get here, making the most of your opportunity, trying to win as many matches as possible and go as deep as possible to pick up both the points and the money and, of course, the match practice too. Mm. We've waxed lyrical about the performance we've just uh, seen from Henry. Going back to Emily earlier today, and the bad news, by the way, for everybody else, is that she's made it clear she intends to be here week five, week six, week seven and week eight. And she's certainly not showing any signs of slowing down, is she? No, she's not at all. And what a remarkable win for her again today. Her reaction at the end of it actually surprised me. She kind of doubled over as if she was utterly exhausted and she even said that in the interview with you as well she said I'm absolutely done because playing someone and that was credit to, to Elise Maloney because she does break you down in, in terms of her tennis and her fighting spirit but I think for Emily to come through that to have won now her third week out of four as, especially as she, she heads to Israel tomorrow to compete internationally I think that means so very much to her and you know she came into to the tournament office to thank everyone there to say you know you, you've really helped me thank you so much for putting on these tournaments tournaments, which is, which is so nice to see. She's such a humble person off the court as well. Yeah, and she says she's done, but she's going to be on that plane to Israel at eight o'clock in the morning. So she's got to find some more energy levels. Uh, in terms of other highlights, you actually made a comeback and were seen hitting emphatically on court <laughs> during the week, Jenny. I, um, I came out of retirement for uh, about 20 minutes or so. I did manage to have a hit with uh, Emily Afton, which was great, and actually played some mixed doubles with Josh Paris against Emily and uh, Mason Recky, which was entertaining but um, no I, I'm firmly sticking in the commentary box that's for sure but and, it was... and of course she does go home victorious in one area our snakes and ladders inaugural champion this was an event that took place last night she's been very quiet about it <laughs> but uh, if you want a game of snakes and ladders Jenny is 
the person not to play. Yeah, I demolished you, didn't I? Yes. What was it, the quarterfinals? Yes, never mind. Never I'm not mind. semi-finals, We've... Calvin in the final. Cut, we're out of time. <laughs> Jenny, thank you very much uh, indeed. Uh, so uh, there we are, it is the end of week four. Emily is the apple of everybody's eye again as Henry discovers an irresistible winning pattern. From us all here at Loughborough University, it's goodbye.